this podcast is brought to you by Midwinter. These guys were a startup, an entrepreneurial startup some 10 years ago, way before it was even cool to be a tech startup, and have since then gone on to win every single award year after year after year when it comes to financial advice software. I use them, um, I know a lot of people that have, and if you haven't already jumped onto the new way of doing business, which is all cloud-based and API, so it all talks to each other, then go look at yourself in the mirror and sort yourself out and go get midwinter. Get ready for a, a, an exciting uh, morning at XY Live, guys. So uh, welcome everyone that's there. We've, um, we've got a couple of announcements to make. So we've, got, we've locked in a, our next social event, and that's on the 11th of August. Um, MLC has been kindly enough to invite us to their premises in Sydney. And uh, so that'll, that'll be running in the evening on the 11th of August. Um, the concept is the 80%. So we're going to have acorns down there showing us how they got so much engagement out of the Australian people. Um, I think a lot of other tech companies have been seeing what they've been doing and looking at them with amazement and how much engagement they've got. Like people that know finance um, are getting attracted to it and that have never been attracted to anything before. So we're going to be getting some good insights out of that. And then we've also got Glenn Carlson uh, from Dent, uh, which are the owners of uh, KPI, which a number of um, people in our industry have been uh, benefiting from in terms of going on a journey of uh, finding their ideal clients. And, and these got, uh, Glenn's going to go through um, the ins- how, how we can actually take those insights from Acorns and actually implement them uh, within our own businesses. So looking at those practical ways that um, we can refine how we uh, deal with, uh, with our clients and potential clients. Uh, the other thing is, if, if you're not getting the emails, please jump on our mailing list. You can hop on the website there and just uh, drop in your details. Um, we've got um, look out for the blogs that um, so we get every every event that we've done previously um, in the last few weeks uh, they've come out on on a blog so um, they're available um, on our website and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see those come through on LinkedIn and Twitter as well so uh, keep keep your eye out the uh, today we've got Dean Holmes all the way from London he's uh, He's kindly been kind enough to. It's over. It's past eleven o'clock over there, so it's really nice of him to sort of be sharing his time at this this hour. Welcome, Dean. Thank you, Paddy. Thanks, Adrian. How are you? That's all right. Oh, everyone else knows me at Paddy in this community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was already in trouble by calling you a nickname to start with. So, ah, <laughs> uh, that'll be that'll be the least of it by the end of the um, session. The um, so Dean Dean's been running his business overseas for the people that don't know. Um, he, he does pop back to Australia from time to time, but he's going to be running through how he does this, um, how other people could do it and what what he's seen, what the journey's been like for him. So um, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, there's not many people that have done what he's been able to do and uh, I think everyone's going to get some really good uh, ideas out of um, what he's been doing, even if you just want to do it in Australia, um, live in Mildura and just deal with people in Sydney or something. So... Uh, <laughs> That's uh yeah, there's gonna be some really cool outtakes. So Dan, we might we might kick off um why you kicked off why you moved overseas and what was the, the reason for the big move? Yeah, sure. Um so essentially the the big thing that kicked us off to go overseas is I got ma- I got married almost four years ago, uh, to my lovely wife and she got an opportunity to uh continue and expand her career by moving across to London. Um, so she got she got a promotion, which meant that we could move across to London. Um, it had always been something that um, she had wanted to do as she came across from New Zealand and then to, and then to Sydney and now to London. Um, and so I was lucky enough to be able to support her and her career as well by being um, by being able to sort of move the business and move my role within the business, which we'll get onto. So it's not just my business, but the broader business that I'm part of. Um, but move my part of the business over to London and still be able to uh, operate, talk to clients, uh, have have meetings, have Skype meetings, like what things like we're doing now um, was all able to be done uh, remotely. So it wasn't a it was a sort of a, a reactive uh, situation to it to a, to uh, a situation that was presented to us. We we took advantage of it because it was absolutely a great op- great opportunity uh, and. Here I am. We've been across. We've been in London for about two years, and it's about two years and two months now. So it's uh it's been a successful journey so far. 
Yeah, great. So it's a, it's a really good example of how advisors can um, support their partners um, because of the flexibility of the, our jobs, I guess, That's mm-hmm. uh, which is awesome. The uh, Just a reminder to everyone out there that while we're going through this, if you've got any questions that you're really keen to ask Dane, just pop them in the message box and uh, Phil will be keeping track of those and he'll he'll come back to us um in the second half with um with asking that um how how did your clients react to to the move and how did you deal with that transition yeah well there was there was there was two people there was sort of two different people that i had to tell firstly i sort of had to work work out a situation with my call my internal clients being my my business partner and and staff within the business so that was a that was an interesting challenge um in it in itself my business partner some years in advance that that this might happen um but obviously the the day that it did happen is 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 a little bit of a uh became a little bit of a shock and we had to implement a strategy within the business and then obviously at the time that i left to come across to the uk we had a much larger business which we had about 10 staff at the time so it was about how we uh communicate communicated that to to the to the broad to, broad, to the broader team uh it was it was accepted really well but i i definitely couldn't have done what i've done without actually without the team that's based in sydney um secondly the, with the clients the the way in which i tackled that is i essentially went to my largest client and spoke to them first uh with essentially the view that if i could uh, explain it to them what I was looking to do, and if my largest client was happy uh, enough to stay to stay with me and continue to work with me while I was in the while I was in the UK, then everyone else sort of beyond that would would say yes. Um, so I said, a bit of trickle down economics. Almost, yeah. so. <laughs> so if I can retain the biggest client, it's the eighty twenty rule. I think you're having a presentation mm-hmm. on that shortly. Um, but yeah, exa- exactly. I sort of started with the biggest one, the biggest, that was the biggest challenge for me. And so when they were very, very comfortable with the, with the idea, it just gave me confidence to go along and, um, continue to have those, com- to continue to have those conversations with, with clients. Um, so, so with that, there was so the, some of the key steps were just going to working with your largest clients first and, um, making sure your team was on board and, and with that transition, and that was that was probably it. Yeah, they were the key part of yeah, it. Yeah, they were the, they were there were the they were the two big parts. There was a technology part and a, and an admin part, which we'll get onto just in relation to what my day is like normally. Um, but look, from the from the client perspective, it was it was ninety nine point nine percent. It was amazing uh, from all the from all the clients. So heaps of the clients because I have a really good relationship with Great the company. clients. They were incredibly actually excited. They'd already been on a little bit of a journey with me, um, you know, f- over the over the years, just with the life experiences that we have personally, and I share those with clients as well. And so they knew they knew about Enchika, they knew what she where she came from, what she was doing. And so when I talked about her getting a promotion and things like that, it was a really easy conversation to have because they were already sort of you know, aware of, of that part of my, my personal life as well. So that was, that was really, that was really positive. Some clients were, were almost uh, indifferent in that it didn't really worry them at all. Um, Some clients I only see once a year. And so I was always promising to come back to Sydney. Uh, I come back four times a year anyway, which we'll talk about in a second, but I was always promising to be there. So some clients um, didn't even know that I had left before I left because I didn't get a chance to talk to them because it happened, the move happened quite quickly. Uh, and so some clients didn't know for three or six months until I actually got back and was able to see them. Uh, but really that they, they wouldn't have known anyway, they pick up my mobile phone diverts to my Skype. So if they ever tried to email or call me, uh, I pick up the phone. Uh, I don't pick up the phone at three o'clock in the morning, but other than that, it's yeah. it's actually really streamlined that people call the same numbers they've always called, and it just the phone just rings. Um, so yeah, so that was the that was the broad reaction from my clients. So, so the so what, I guess on that point, what are the, as a result of the move? I was just thinking, what are the touch points that you have with clients now? So 
they're not necessarily being able to pick up the phone and get onto you straight away um, in their like day hours. Yeah. Well, so how how does that what happen, with what I structure like, my um, day in days. a particular particular manner. So this is a this is a really long day for me. It's not normally like this uh, because I woke up at five a.m. this morning. So it's midnight. It's just past midnight now. But I woke up at five a.m. this morning. Um, don't worry, I had a nap. I always have. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> Uh, but I woke up at five o'clock this morning, I, which was two o'clock in the afternoon in Sydney time, and so that actually gives me enough time to cover the to cover the business day to talk to most. I talk to people within my business and my staff and my business partner Paul. We have chats most most days, which means that I'm I know what's going on within the business from an internal perspective, and then there's heaps of time for me to go and talk to clients. Uh, the surprising learning from this whole process is that there's lots of clients that actually want to talk, want and need to talk to you after hours. And so at the moment, if a client wants to talk to me at nine o'clock at night, that's incredibly convenient for me. It's 12 o'clock in the day. It's, re- it's very easy for me to do provide that service where I can talk to clients mm-hmm. out of hours and it doesn't, it, it's in my normal working day. So it's, a, it's actually works quite well uh, being available for clients at a slightly different time zone to what I've been um, doing before. So that so the day-to-day client communication is, is very similar in that I can always have a phone call with a client during a business day. I do, everyone sends emails as, as everyone knows and so those emails get answered within a 24-hour time frame anyway, which is, which is a reasonable time frame to get back to clients anyway. Uh, and then I'm coming back to Sydney anyway. So I come back uh, for the last two years. I've come back to Sydney every approximately every three months uh, for about for about three or four weeks. And so that allows me to. Yeah, great. Is that is that mainly for? Um, obviously, it's great to see clients face to face. Does that, look, does it's, that help it's, with a, it's a really it's a client basis well? of of doing it. Is that I actually just want to see. Um, I, I want to sit down and see with my clients and everything like that. And so the the importance of maintaining the relationship, you can have a virtual relationship just like what we're doing right now. You can do that. Uh, but it's also nice to sit down and have a, mm. have a cup of coffee or to go to a client or they come and see you and things like that. There's The relationship gets built in two different ways as a result of doing it and they're both important. Mm. Um, I, I've done – sorry, Absolutely. you go. And the – I was the te- your team so obviously um they're on yeah, hand i think really help i think they're watching around uh, in, I so I, I do a big shout out to the team G'day guys. uh because they they hey from, from my from this process shane stella <laughs> kevin and shane? My business partner paul uh i can't Get back see to work, guys. yeah <laughs> stella stella oh, and shane. i can see stella's stella and there, shane are there. Stella. i can see their little this your first pictures time. Uh, but yeah, with in all honesty, there's there's no way that I wouldn't be able I wouldn't be able to do it in the way that I um, run the business without um, without the team. <laughs> you got Shane claiming a bit of claiming a bit of the yeah. That's for definitely the part yeah. of um, <laughs> my ability to work remotely is actually having a team. And so uh, one of the things, one of the learnings um, about actually opening this up to other people, other advisors that are looking to do it, is that some, as simple as it is, someone needs to open the mail. Someone needs to be there to answer a phone call at 10 a.m. when I can't. Someone do- Yeah, so there you go. So the letter open up. That's, that's his nickname. Uh, so it's, it, they're, si- they're simple examples, and obviously there's much more complica- complex um, jobs that those guys do as well. Uh, but it's actually just um, having a solution around all, all of those things uh, and having some administration help as a minimum to enable you, you as an advisor to be able to work in different locations. Uh, and it doesn't, it, it could be as simple as this gives you the opportunity to have a, have a two or three month working holiday uh, in different locations as opposed to trying to squeeze your holiday uh, into into sort of two weeks. Um, we all, as advisors, we all. Oh, sorry, mm. oh, um, well, we, as advisors, we all go in and run independent practices so that we can have flexibility. 
but then we we always get too busy and forget about creating the flexibility and this is just my mm -hmm. mine is a very big example of what people can do on a smaller scale and just have two or three months off two or three months traveling and working via do using this technology and it just means that their business can keep running whilst they're having you know having an experience in their life as well well then it sounds sounds like it's all gone pretty smoothly but i'm sure there's been a couple of challenges along the way what, what, what were some of the look it was um one of like challenges? staying staying connected uh with the team is is one of the one of the definitely one of the challenges um anyone that's worked in an open plan office uh knows that you know when you're working with a group of people that you get along with there's a lot of, there's a positive banter but also there's a sharing of combined intellect that happens within an office uh and so my role within the office in sydney was it was a lot uh was a lot about that, about actually making sure that everyone knew what was going on. I was there to answer questions. I, I created a little, a little bit of the energy within the business. And so that obviously that sort of dropped away um, when I when I moved to the UK. Uh, and that was as much for the team as it was for me. So by me creating the energy, that actually energizes me as well. And so that is something that you've got to maintain whilst working on your own. Uh, it can it can be a little bit uh, boring at times to uh, work a hundred percent to work a hundred percent on your own. Uh, so that was no, no I talk to the mailman. I leave the company. door ajar, and people can yeah. <laughs> people just put their heads in and talk to me and things like that. Open door policy. Yeah, exa exactly, exactly right. <laughs> um, so look, that was hard. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, no, I'm yeah, I, I go to the I um, I, I, I again, travel with the laptop just, in all yeah. sorts of locations because it just. It's just, it's. I have the flexibility to do it, and <laughs> and uh, with my wife has travelled for work, and so I've just been able to pack up the laptop and go with her to different to different countries and work from those countries as well. So as if as if I was in Sydney or as if I was in London. So that's worked. That's worked incredibly well. So it's the energy and 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 team environment that's quite hard. Um, and the other thing I suppose it is. Uh, some training and development uh, because I did a lot of training and development for my staff so they've missed out or, and I've had to change the way in which that happens. Um, so if you've got a team that's that's probably something important as well and there's a there's a there's a whole new business pipeline that has to be managed as well as in how you uh, attract and retain and get new clients that you that has to be thought through as well because you can't do this uh, forever if you're not at least taking on some new clients and things like that. Um, so they're, they're probably the challenges. And has that been through? Yeah, most of my, my new clients mostly today? have come from existing clients. Uh, and that, from my perspective, has worked the best because the existing client who's referring already knows that I'm overseas and so they actually pre-sell that issue and, and deal with that objection before I talk to the clients. And so... Um, yeah, That'd be a pretty yeah, cool story. Ex exactly. My, my so, advisor, he lives uh, in London. So yeah, there hasn't been a big issue <laughs> with referrals from existing clients because they deal with that. Um, I've had, I have my process. Then is I would have Skype calls with with clients. Uh, I choose Skype because everyone's heard of it. Uh, if I said let's have a blab meeting, clients would probably have no idea. But every everyone has heard of Skype. Everyone can download it. It's really easy and it works very, it actually works very well. Um, and so I have phone conversations, Skype meetings with clients. And then I'm always, because I'm always coming back every three months or so, I'm, I'm typically, it's close that I'm going to see that client in person as well. So I might, all, I might, I've still engaged the client. We might start working for them uh, whilst I'm here, but then I'll meet them within the first you know, three to six months of the relationship, I will I will have had a face to face meeting with them as well. Yeah, great. Well, Dean, how about we um we'll be able to just jump into a few really hot tips and tricks for everyone out there, and and um, if someone wants to get up and running like you have, um, before we jump over to because there's I'm sure there's going to be some really good questions coming out from people, so. Um, yeah, if it, what, Look, what would be your, your best tips? Yeah, the, the tool, the tool side of it is actually 
uh, surprisingly quite simple. And we probably, most people already use the vast majority of the tool anyway. Uh, Skype uh, is hands down the, the easiest and the best thing for having uh, video calls with, with clients, as I was saying. Uh, I've, it has a, I have an Australian number, so people dial an O2 number, it rings on my Skype phone as if I'm, and they ring it, it rings instantly as if I'm in Sydney. So there's no, they don't even notice a time lag uh, with, with that. Uh, and my Australian mobile phone number diverts to that Skype number. So it doesn't matter how people want to call me, they'll still get in touch with me. Um, so that works really well. If I want to do some uh, screen sharing with a few people, then I use the GoToMeeting, uh, which you guys might use in the future. That works really well. Uh, for people yeah. di dialing in, they dial in with their phone or they dial in with their, um, the computer. So that works really well. Uh, and then it's just having access to your client files and things like that. And so we've got a VPN uh, that so I can access my Australian server uh, remote remotely, which means I can access all the all the client files. Um, so that's so that technology wise, that's as simple as it is. So anyone that's already using a a cloud service for their for their data and already using like office 365 or gmail and things like that they're pretty well there anyway in relation to the technology yeah. so it doesn't that part of it is not a restriction anymore um you should have a good webcam so people can see people can see you and things like that uh and hear you but besides that the technology side is is actually really um really really simple Well, no, I think um, we were having a chat yesterday about how important lighting can be as well. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to have to yeah, um, well. adjust where I do my gloves from. And I think um, you figured that out early on because you wanted your clients exactly, to be yeah, the face and well, 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 said, well said. But there's a, yeah, the light, light, lighting, <laughs> it, it is important to be aware of what, of what, you, what you look like and what's going on within uh, – Within the screen, within the screen, because it's the way in which you're building mm -hmm. the connection with the client. Um, uh, you ne you need to, you know, I did put a sh I did put a shirt on today, which as Stella has already commented on, uh, <laughs> that that yeah, exactly, and, and exactly, and exactly and right. I won't tell you. I'm well. just wearing shorts on the bottom, <laughs> but shirt on the top. But it does, you uh, you know that. If I'm talking to a new client and things like that, you, I will be presentable because that's in, that's important. Uh, when I'm talking to my staff, it may, it may not. It, it, I do not always wear a shirt. <laughs> yeah, Shane's lucky if you got clothes on, eh? Is it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I hope you put some clothes on for Stella at least. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so look, that's the technology. Technology so shouldn't stop them. anyone from do. Technology shouldn't stop anyone from doing this. Um, I have I have heard of situations that um, that certain AFSL or dealer groups uh, struggle to get their head around the concept, um, but you know th there's there's different opportunities for you to do, to do that as to do that as well. There's some there's some quirk because I have an Australian office. It's different because everything actually goes out of our Australian office, so it's quite different from that perspective. There's some quirks that PDSs have to be given in Australia to Australian clients. Uh, and I think it's all, all these issues are really about that the, some parts of the law just haven't caught up to reality. We know that all the top four banks have outsourced everything to offshore. And so everyone's working out a way, but there, I have heard of some dealer groups that are unable to sort of uh, work, work or get their head around this type of working arrangements. Hmm. Well, Phil, um, what a that's that's the compliance side of things. Probably something that we might get another couple of questions. But Phil, what, what's what's yeah. been emerging on? Yeah, the, so I'll, the I'll just run through a few of my questions, and then I'll I'll go to um, some questions that we've got from from sure. some people, which have been great. Uh, and if you've got any more questions, guys, just um, feel free to ask them. Paddy's frozen in my screen. Is that is that going on for everyone else? I he's still oh, moving. Okay. Still moving. For me. <laughs> oh, okay. The wind, the wind chains. So, <laughs> so Dean, a great topic. I actually started my financial planning business with a hope that I would be able to work in Australia for nine months and travel for three months every single year. Yep. Uh, it hasn't happened, and with three little ones, it's kind of made that a bit harder <laughs> now that they're kind of 
in kinder and go to school next year. So, but it, but it's an awesome topic and something that. I know I'd love to do, and I'm sure that um, plenty of advisors would love to do. Um, but I've got a question about what, what is, just give us an idea of the size of your business. Um, and do you think it's possible to do it, uh, work remotely if you're just a one man band or if you've got a really small team? Yeah, well, we have our, our the, we have five, we have five people within, within my business. So Paul and Stella, my yeah. business partners, and then Shane and Kevin. So there's five, there's five of us within the team. Um, and we have we we have about eighty between us. We have about eighty full service clients, and then another hundred uh, that are lower lower touch lower touch clients. Um, so as it as it, I sort of call out, we've we're now a business versus a as one man band financial advisor. So there's definitely a difference between the two. And so when when you're when you're a business and you've got staff, things can happen whilst you're not there. So the, the example of, mm. um, you know, phones being answered, advice being created, client queries being solved, all of that happens. Whether I was in Sydney or here, my, my team is helping me do all of those, thi those things. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're on your, if you're 100% uh, a, uh, uh, what do we call it, like an entrepreneur that's just running their own financial planning firm and doing everything, well, then there's just a few other things that needs to get solved um, in order for you to go away. And it's, it's actually really simple things like, like the mail is a real honest example of things that you have to do. Real We still have to send real application forms to clients and get wet signatures back and things like that. Mm. The tiny little admin things are actually the things that need to be solved. If you've got an yeah. existing client base and you want to go on holidays for two months, you can do what I'm doing without, without, a, without a question because you're able to talk and communicate to your clients, most, most businesses on wrap accounts, and so you can trade, implement online and do all the ongoing service over your existing clients. You could do that quite easily online. Um, but, yeah, there's just a few little admin things that, you've got to, that has to be sorted out. Um, mm. But it does give you that flexibility yeah, no. to go. Yeah, and I suppose I suppose as a, the, there are options to maybe partner with other advice firms to do those little admin roles because they're really it's especially these days lots of things are electronic signatures and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it is becoming exactly. a bit easier all, to go all at the end line. of the day. All all single financial advisors should have a buddy anyway. They should they should have, hmm. they should have their own succession plan. Uh, if something if the worst case scenario happens that there's someone to look after their clients if they can't look after them. And so yeah. you probably, if you were to think about it from that perspective, there's probably two single advisors out there that actually could share a resource, which means that they could both go and do this type of thing going forward or one resource between yeah. three advisors and things like that. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, totally I don't agree. Know that, I don't and know you, and you did mention, you mentioned dealer groups. What do, what dealer are you guys a part of, and and they're obviously comfortable with with you working remotely. Yeah, well, we we have our own AFSL, so our okay. dealer our our dealer group is essentially called the Wealth Network. Uh, it's it's a it's the AFSL that we started about five five years ago. Uh, it's slightly larger now that we have a few more a few authorized reps uh, that are, that are joining us at the moment underneath their own cars. Uh, but yeah, so we've had our own license for for for, for four for four or five years now, uh, which obviously makes it easier. I'm still the, I'm uh, still working as the as part of the licensee, uh, but I'm back in Australia doing all of all of that work associated with that as well. Uh, yeah, and yeah. everything everything is done and produced in Australia as well. Yeah, uh, so it's, I think it's just the larger dealer groups that sort of haven't have. Um, just, just a little bit more difficulty getting their head around it. That's all. As yeah, that's back. right. Yeah, and um, I mean these days, people. Are, <laughs> welcome, welcome back, Katie. Uh, I think right. these days people are getting a bit more used to it. The last question I've got, and then I'll throw over the questions that we've been um, uh, that we've been given, is with your business. How is it going? I know you've got people in business watching, so you're going to be kind of. Um, you know, cage you with how you're answering, but do they find it harder to deal with you being overseas because you've got to have a meeting every year? Like when you're in the same office building, you just 
you know what's mm. going on all the time just because you're there. Oh, yeah. Um, but now that you're not there, you've got to Correct. organize meeting. Is it? Do they find it more difficult? Mm, yeah, hundred percent. So it's it's not it's not an it's not easy for them either, and so it hasn't been easy for them for the last yeah. two two years uh, because. I, you know, as simple as it is, is that I answered I answered some questions, and so if Dean's not there uh, at ten a.m. to answer a question, then we've got to wait till two p.m. for Dean to answer the question, mm -hmm. and so sometimes that just slows down slows down the process, uh, and so there's there's probably you know there could be a couple of those examples every every day of things that don't get solved when they could get solved instantly if I was, I, w I was there. That being said, I could mm. easily be in meetings as well and that same situation could occur or I'd be on holidays or I'll be away from the office. So there's lots of examples where I'm not instantly contactable even if I was in, if, if in, if I was in Sydney. Uh, but, yeah, without, it, without a doubt, it's not, it's not easy running for me uh, and it's not easy running for my team. At different, at different and I guess the plus side is, I guess the plus side is you're potentially more efficient not having to answer those questions for four hours well, of the day. Yeah, so. I get I get a lot of time to work on my own and do do things without inter uh, interruptions. Uh, yeah. But that's I don't I prefer the chaos than the, than the silence. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we've got we've got a few questions that we're going to um, touch on. So Jenny Pierce said. Um, do you think it takes a, a particular type of client to work with you being overseas, so either they're younger or w whether they're more mature? Um, do you think it matters it, what type of client you work I honestly with? Don't, I honestly don't think it matters. Uh, if you uh, regard, like if, even if you think about the age range of everyone that's listening, listening now is that either your parents or your grandparents probably have heard of Skype already. And so... The reason why it's becoming more comfortable is everyone starting to travel. And so most people know someone that has gone and worked in London for two years. So that so the concept has not is 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 a little bit uh, you know worked through now that people know that people work over, mm -hmm. overseas. Um, and so look, my every older client that I have is is as equally as happy as all the young clients that I have. Um, and so my my demographic of clients is is older than older than me, myself, uh, and so uh, they've all been they're all comfortable with with the concept. Yeah, yeah, cool. And and Mark's also just asked a follow on just regards to um, getting new clients. How, how do you find getting new clients being remote, where people can't just call your mobile phone as easily and just and speak to you? Or you can't go out there and, and, and try and get new clients. Yeah, it, look, it's 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 not as easy as being in Sydney, probably because of the um, the relationship that I could have with referral partners is not as strong from here. And so, if you've got a if you've got close referral partners that generate business for you, you've always got to sort of massage those relationships over time. And so, that is more difficult remotely. Um, so that's one one side of it. The client referrals. Uh, are much stronger, and as I said before, you're sort of pre pre sold somewhat uh, with a with a client referral because they already know you're overseas. And if they're getting in contact with you, one knowing that you're overseas, that means they're essentially comfortable with the idea, uh, and then I deal and then I deal with the objections. And having having my team in Sydney really helps. Um, mm. okay, my, the the probably the the best story of that that I that I have is that I had a new client meeting where I was in I was in Turkey and I had got back from I did a day trip to to Gallipoli and had a meeting that night it was probably like two or three o'clock in the morning but I had a meeting with that night in the hotel in in Turkey in Istanbul and but the client or the prospect client who's now a client. She came into my office in Sydney, sat down, and she met with Paul and Stella in person, and we had a meeting whereby I was on the I was on the uh, Skype call in the boardroom where they where so the client could see me, and yeah. they could see that Paul and Stella and that it was a real office and that we had that we were a business, 
And so that's mm. another way of tackling, that's another way that we use to tackle um, the objections in relation to, you know, being, being overseas is when they come in and they see, um, you know, Paul and Stella and they can meet that and they know that there's always someone around. Yeah. And, and kind of just following on that, um, James has asked, uh, if you were to go 100% remote, what would you do differently? And I guess I'll preface that question with, do you think it is possible to go 100% remote? Oh, I, I, I fundamentally believe it's 100% possible. Uh, you would, but you would, it's, it's, some, it's, prob it's harder when you've got an existing business to change it completely. But if you started out, mm. uh, if you started out with that end in mind, you could definitely do it. You would make sure that you're more, more paperless. You would make sure that you're using ele like wrap accounts or electronic transactions for everything. You would make sure that you would have all the technology in place from day one. You would train your clients mm. that this is how you communicate. Um, you know, we don't we don't have to meet. We we meet remotely. We meet on Skype, etc. So if you built your business from day one and all your marketing messaging and your whole business theme was around the flexibility both for you and your client then you've got some great messaging around that um yeah you know our, our message is not about i'd be interested we've got um we've got fraser jack and james sutherland there i wonder if um they'd be able to let us know if they'd let someone go 100 percent online overseas and whether that was possible but, uh, yeah, still listening. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it's it's been <laughs> an amazing. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so they're yes. they're running in a license too. So, um, and and I mean it's it is called my online advisor. So I'd imagine that they they'd be keen on that. So, um, thanks, Dean. It's been an awesome interview. Um, and Stella's just emailed me and said, "Can you make sure you wear shirts every every um, meeting yeah. team in your hat?" Um, so I thought I'd better bring it up because she asked yeah. me to bring it up. Publicly. No, it's okay. I'll um, just get on one of those clip. I just get a clip on uh, collar for my jumper. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just a yeah t shirt with a clip on collar. Perfect. Exactly. Um, awesome, Dean. I think before before we head off, I was just going to say, guys, um, if you know people that aren't listening to this and you think they'd be benefiting from it, share it around. It's just simply forwarding the link when we send out the email. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to have more and, people involved. And I, I will say and a, a few people have been talking about the technical issues. We are well aware that uh, this platform isn't great and this will be our second last one. We're just finalising which platform we're going to move to. Um, and so I apologise that you've spent a lot of time, um, you know, wasting a lot of time getting on. But we do upload these um, to the XY Advisor YouTube channel so you can catch up on, on all the all the gold that Dean shared with us. So thanks again, Dean, for, for coming. And um, it is 12.36 yep, a.m. over there. So, yeah. And you've got to get up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Or yeah, well, I, might, this morning I, might for you. I might talk to my team now so I can go to bed. Uh, yeah, he's, he's going to have a little sleep in tomorrow yeah, morning. Exactly. All right, awesome. I think Shane's going to bonus with you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Dan, and thanks everyone for coming. And thanks, Pete. Did an awesome job as well.